Hi, I'm Rick Bell and welcome to a special edition of 5 Minutes of Management. With us today is Brian Berthold, the Chief Wellness Visionary for Hub of Health up there in the beautiful town of Portland, Oregon. Brian's passion for health and wellness goes well beyond the daily 9 to 5 grind and credits the company which operates in the corporate wellness space with turning his lifestyle around. When Brian joined Hubbub, he was pre-diabetic and struggling with his weight. Brian now enjoys healthy cooking and recently com completed his third marathon in just 12 months. So my friend, that is impressive. I did two in the past two years and my body is still barking at me. Uh, welcome to the show, Brian, and how are you? And are you in training? I'm awesome, and Bill, thanks for having me. Um, I'm in training, but not for a marathon. Like three was kind of enough for me, and whether I got burned out or not. Uh, but I'm doing all sorts of different CrossFit as well as some boxing, so I'm mixing it up a little. That's great. That's great. So, okay, so one very basic question to start out. What is not working in corporate wellness programs and why? What's not working in corporate wellness is when organizations are dictating to their employees what they have to do according to either their insurance carrier or the boss, and quite frankly, that turns people off. Uh -huh. Okay, so then what is working, and what, are, what, is, what is Hubbub finding is working in the corporate wellness space? Yeah, for us at Hubbub, we really believe wellness is an individual journey. Wellness means something different to, to all of us, and to you and I, even though we're both marathon runners or have run in our lives, and today where we are, um, we're at a different stage of, of needs. And so when a program is all about figuring out what we can do for that individual, whether it's allowing them to walk at lunch, spend time with their kids, healthy cooking tips, there's so many different things that uh, resonate with individuals. Um, so wellness is an individual journey. All right, so tell me, how are your clients measuring success with their wellness programs? Well, they have this great opportunity with Hubbub. It's flexible, so we're able to measure from a number of data analytics. Are people signing on to the platform? Have they downloaded the app? And most importantly, are they participating in activities? One of the things we've done at Hubbub is we've broken those kind of this small little habit chunks or habit stacking. So a lot of our challenge is it's not a summer walkathon for three months. You know, it's a two-week challenge or a two-week activity. And so it's very easy for us to be able to provide data analytics for our employer clients. Uh, so are you finding that this is all about an individual's motivation or is, is it kind of a group thing? Um, the power of social is magnetizing. And you know, we're not just talking about Facebook and Twitter. We're really talking about is our community, our connectivity, not just to our workmates or people that we're sharing cubes with or a building or a branch. The people in our community. You know, we're talking about that social collaboration where I get a little nudge from an individual to remind me, hey, did I work out? Did I bring a great job and bring, you know, a healthy snack from home. Um, so it is that power of social in an individual setting, though. Um, and of course, there are group goals and activities that we're focused on. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so in, in a broader look at wellness, is it wise to sort of bring the family into it, bring, bring in some family dynamics um, and not just the individual? You touched on for us at Hubba. Not only is wellness an individual journey, but it's all supported by our family. I look at my own personal journey, right? Losing all that weight, running, changing, radically changing my lifestyle. It couldn't have happened if I go home and my wife is cooking different things that aren't conducive to my new journey. And so um, having spouses and partners, children, and even my sister in LA or others participate in my wellness journey is all about that support, that social support connectivity. And you know, that's unique about Hubbub. We're probably one of the only rough offerings that allows unlimited friends and family to participate in their corporate wellness program. Huh, interesting. All right, so incentives, do they work? Incentives, small and frequent, that's the key. Um, everyone likes to be recognized. Um, it's finding ways that the process is streamlined and again, it's, it's those small pats on the back. I mean, gone are the days where we're paying people 50 or $100 to do a biometric screen or take a health risk assessment. What we found is it's the sprinkling of literally three and five and $7 um, Amazon.com gift cards. Um, and that's really the power of, uh, power of incentives, small and frequent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, should wellness coordinators be worried about participation? Is that a key metric to measure how your wellness program is doing? I think it's one of the things, right? As organizations, especially as leadership, right? We as a wellness team got the buy-off from the boss. We have a budget to go spend. Well, people are gonna want some data analytics, right? 
it's the right mixture of, of data, but also culture. And I think one of the things that we're seeing at Hubbub and many other organizations are seeing this is that what we're dubbing the water cooler effect. What is the conversation? How did that change either at the coffee machine, the water cooler, when people are standing in line at their local coffee shop, taking a break from work. What are they talking about? Are they talking about what they had at happy hour? How they binge ate or did crazy things over the weekend? Are they talking about how they brought healthy recipes home to the family? How they did a barbecue, but they might have mingled in some healthy things. And are they also then talking about how maybe they got their spouse or their partner or husband to start walking with them on the weekends? Um, that's the magic. So we want data analytics. There's a role for that, but it's not the be all and end all. It's again, that culture. How are we impacting and how are we moving that to be a positive conversation? Okay, are, are we too worried about ROI? ROI, I think in the past we've been absolutely fixated on it, right? And one of the things that we found is we've gotten into that. You know, just like all mathematical equations, there's different variables that can be part of it. And to get an ROI, what we found is many people were not jury rigging, but, but we were finding a way to make the numbers work. And quite frankly, that's not right. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it goes back to our culture. And are we seeing activity uh, change at the work site? I think ROI is, again, one of those measurements we could look at. There's different ways to look at ROI. We're having some clients look at ROI, even in the mindset of PTO usage. Or when people take PTO, are they actually on holidays or are they on uh, leave because they're sick? And we've had groups be able to look at that and determine that, in fact, um, their wellness program made an impact on that. In the longer term, we hopefully will be able to impact medical claims and the cost of that coverage. But again, it's really about how we're impacting people's lives, how they're engaging. And at the end of the day, we have lots of CEOs, lots of leadership come to us and say, you know, it was all about ROI, maybe that got us thinking about this, but ultimately it's the right thing to do for our employees. Nice, okay. All right, so finally, one final question for you, Brian. Uh, what finally triggered uh, the wellness push for you individually? You know, for me, it was this ebb and flow. I was a collegiate athlete at one point with 4% body fat. I became this amazing corporate slug, ate out, traveled all the time, and ended up, you know, 45 pounds overweight. And I just thought at the time, in this lifestyle treadmill that I was leading, that another pill, another medication, another visit to the doc was my answer. And I think ultimately it was um, when I was going through an airport one time and living literally on my asthma inhaler because I couldn't walk through the airport to run for a flight that said, I got to change something. That I made that decision. I started seeing my doctor. It was really at hubbub. I found a challenge that resonated with me. It wasn't about doing the pedometer challenge, losing 40 pounds all at once. It was a little two-week challenge called Eat Something Orange. And I knew that I could do that. I could bring an orange to work for two weeks. And that was my small little catalyst. And then social intervention helped. I got pats on the back. My boss invited me to do a push-up challenge. I started walking, then a 5K, then a 10K, then a half marathon. And as we talked about, ultimately three marathons. And all along, though, it was these small little activities broken down in a social environment that got me to the path that I wanted to take. That's a very cool story. Excellent. Well, good. Well, Brian, thank you so much for your time, and we appreciate it. And thanks for joining us on 5 Minutes of Management. I'm Rick Bell, and thanks again, Brian. Bill, my pleasure. Okay. Take care.